Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to today's On Shape Sheet Metal tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at this challenge, the through bracket, and this comes from the Too Tall Toby playlist called Practice Models. I'll include a link down in the description. That way, if you want to give this challenge a try yourself, you can do so and then maybe come on back and watch this tutorial. Now today I'm going to do something a little special. I'm going to create this tutorial using On Shape, but then I'm going to create another tutorial using SolidWorks where I model this exact same challenge. And that way we can really get a nice side-by-side -side comparison of sheet metal features in Onshape and the same sheet metal features in SolidWorks. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this tutorial. Maybe when you're done watching this one, go over and watch the SolidWorks tutorial and let's get into it. Ow. Okay, so here we can see this challenge on YouTube and I always challenge my students to try to improve their speed as they're working through these practice models by using this clock down here in the corner. So I'm gonna click play on the YouTube video. That's gonna start the clock and we're gonna see how fast we can model this part. But before we actually jump into the 3D CAD software, it's good to come up with an idea, a game plan for how you're gonna model this thing. And that game plan usually means deciding where the origin is going to be in the model, and then kind of thinking through how you're gonna create the different features of the model. So you might decide you wanna start out here on the top plane looking down, since that's how this part is gonna to mount to its, its uh, mating component. You might decide to start here on the front plane and use sheet metal tools to kind of create this shape and just model half of it because we have symmetry. Or you might decide to create this shape here and again use sheet metal tools and just model half the model. So I think we're on the right track by modeling half the model because we've got symmetry. And then it's just a matter of experimentation and experience to decide which of those three solutions is gonna be the best. And for me, I think the best solution is gonna be to start with a sketch profile that looks something like this. Just three lines, so 20 millimeters down, 80 millimeters across, and then 30 millimeters up. So that's 70 minus uh, 30, sorry, 40 millimeters up in this direction. And then what we'll do is we'll locate the origin right here. And that might seem a little bit strange, but the reason we're doing that is because we do have symmetry on the model, so we only have to model half the model. And we do have a lot of dimensions that seem to be going right to that location. So we've got this 40 dimension here. We've got the, uh, the, the centered uh, tombstone shape here and this hole that's all centered on the same center line. So I just think it makes sense to kind of line everything up to that location and put the origin there. Again, this is something you're gonna learn more about over time. You're gonna get better at it with experience. But as far as game plan goes, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out by creating that shape and just extruding it halfway through the model because we can mirror the model at the end. Then I'm gonna try to tackle this 45 degree flange here. I think this is gonna be a little tricky, this 45 degree flange. So I'll kind of do that in its own feature. Then I'll start creating this geometry that comes off and out. And then I'll finish up by going through and adding some cuts. So we'll cut this hole, we'll cut this tombstone shape, we'll cut this chamfer, and then we'll finish up with this little fillet here and this hole here. Now, I know that that burned two minutes off the clock and that might seem like a lot of time, but trust me, coming up with a good game plan before you actually get into the CAD is a solid strategy. And then as you go through the model, you try to follow your game plan, but if you get stuck, you can always pivot. So let's move this over to the second screen. Let's get into Onshape and see how quickly we can generate this geometry. So here we are in Onshape. I'm gonna to choose to create a new document. I'm gonna call this 23-10-01-through bracket. This is a public document. So if you sign up for a free account at Onshape, you can just search for this document. You can open it up and start looking at my feature tree. Now I'm gonna to go to the right plane and begin a new sketch. So let's get over to the right plane here, begin a new sketch, and I'm gonna create these three lines. So a line that comes down, here I'm gonna use some auto dimensioning to save time, a line that comes over, and a line that comes up. This one will be 70 minus 30. And then I'm gonna create some additional dimensions to locate this profile. So from this point down to the origin is gonna be 70 millimeters, and from this line over to the origin is going to be 40 millimeters. So there we go, that gives us our basic geometry. Now we're gonna exit that sketch and we're gonna use the on shape sheet metal command called extruded sheet metal model. So sheet metal model extrude. And this lets us pick these one, two, three curves or entities. It lets us specify that our wall thickness is five and our bend radius is five. And it lets us specify the depth and that depth is gonna be 84 over two. There we go, that looks excellent. 
And uh, now the final thing we need to do whenever we're working with sheet metal is we just need to take care to make sure the sheet metal is going in the correct direction. So if we look back at the print here, we can see that with regards to those dimensions that we created, really the sheet metal should be going to the inside of our sketch geometry. So that's not what we're seeing here in on shape. Let's use this option here, uh, right here next to the thickness to reverse the direction of the sheet metal. And there we go, that's what we want. So now we're gonna create what's called an edge flange and another great time saver in Onshape is what's called the S key menu because this S key menu can be customized. So I'm gonna right mouse button here, choose customize, and then I'm gonna go into this list of commands and I'm gonna add the edge flange. It's kind of down near the bottom here if you, if you scroll down for a while, here it is, flange. And then I'm gonna say save shortcut toolbar settings. Now I close this tab and now we see that I have this option for refresh and now we're happy to see that the edge flange is right there on the S key menu. That means I can just pick this edge S key flange and jump right into the edge flange command. So this flange is gonna be at an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, going the wrong way. And then we also need just to take care to match that 20 millimeter dimension. So it looks like we're a little bit low right now. I think we want this to be hold line as the option. That means we're basically gonna hold the original geometry and start the flange at the end of that original geometry. Now, as far as the length of the flange, you know, there's not really a clean way that I've found in on shape to uh, kind of have this terminate right at 70 millimeters high off the origin. So I'm just going to overshoot this. I'll just make it like 60 millimeters long. And then I'm going to begin a sketch on this face. And I'm going to use this option here, the angled rectangle. And I'm going to create a rectangle that just kind of runs along this edge, connects to this edge down here, and then just has one single dimension from the origin to this point. And that's going to be our 70 millimeter dimension to give us the same height as this location over here. I guess I could also do that with a coincident relationship. If I knew those were always intended to be the same, I could also just pick both of these and then use the coincident relationship to line them up. Either way, we create that rectangle. Now we can jump into a cut extrude. Uh, this is going to be a remove through all. And there we go. We're ready to move on to the next feature. Now, these next features get a little bit tricky with regards to the location on the floor or on the top plane. So I think I'm going to start out by creating just a simple layout sketch here in on shape. So I go to the top plane, I begin a sketch and I'm going to sketch a line here. This line is going to be at a distance of 170 millimeters. And then I'm going to create a second line here. This is going to be at a radius of 22 or a distance of 22. I'm going to take that line and just line it up to the midpoint here on the origin. And that should set me up nicely as some layout geometry for these next couple of flanges. So it's always good to take advantage of sketching. You can use sketching as layout geometry in on shape. Let's pick this edge here, S key flange, and we're going to create a new flange here. Uh, once again, the angle is wrong. So let's flip the angle. So it's going the other way and let's look at the flange alignment. This flange alignment here should be hold line. That way the flange begins where the existing material ends basically. Um, and then that's gonna go up to entity. So instead of blind here, I'll say up to entity and I'll just take it right up to the, uh, to the origin or to the top plane. So there we go, that leaves us kind of flush with the floor. Now the final thing I need to do with this flange is I need to account for the fact that it doesn't run the entire length of that edge. And we do that using this option here, partial flange. So we can see in the drawing, it's got an offset of 18 millimeters on the one side. And then um, on the other side, it's also got an offset of 18 millimeters. And the way that we know that is because the dimension is um, 80 minus 44 minus 18. Um, so we could type that in uh, if we wanted to, we could type in 80 minus 44 minus 18. Um, and then that also is gonna leave us with 18 on the other side. So that should be the correct length, but as always, I like to kind of do a sanity check. So I just pick this edge and then I look down here in the corner and we see that we're ending up here with a length of 44 millimeters. And that is the dimension on the print. So we are good. We are in a good spot there. So now for this next flange, we're gonna um, once again, pick this edge S key edge flange. And this time for the end condition, instead of blind, we're gonna go up to entity. We're gonna pick this entity here from our layout sketch. Makes it very easy to calculate what the total length of that flange should be. And then for our location this time, I think we wanna use a different option. We want this to be flush with the top plane. So we'll change this option here to outer. Boom, there we go. 
That gives us exactly what we were hoping for. Let's S key jump into a fillet command and let's use a radius here of 22 millimeters. And that's gonna be assigned on this edge and this edge. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Um, now let's start adding in some holes and some cuts. So we're going to um, use the hole command in on shape with a diameter of 20 millimeters. And then we're going to use this option here, select meet connectors. And what that lets us do is it lets us just pick the, um, let's us just pick this edge here, the circular edge of the, those fillets that we just created. And that'll center the hole right on that circular edge. So very quick, easy to create hole there. Now we're going to create a sketch on this planar face that's sticking down from the flange. That's going to be a line that comes down. We'll come back and touch the end point, come around with a nice tangent arc here. Another line that comes up, and then we'll finish off with a line that comes over here, which has a length of 15 millimeters. Let's make sure that that top line is horizontal. And uh, let's also just make that top line coincident here to the, uh, the top of the model. Let's take this point and make it coincident here to the centered plane. Nice and easy to align that geometry because we made a good decision about the location of our origin. And then we can finish up with this dimension from the print here at 50 millimeters. And let's take that geometry and do an extrude. And that is gonna be an extrude through all. It's nice and on shape whenever you're working in sheet metal, anytime you jump into the extrude command, it defaults to do the extrude as a cut. So now we're gonna create another sketch here for our chamfer. Um, we're gonna create a, a line over at 30 millimeters, a line down at an angle. Be careful not to pick up the midpoint here when you're making that line coming down at an angle. And then we'll close off that sketch for the chamfer. And that's gonna be at an angle of 30 degrees. So 30 millimeters over 30 degree chamfer, S key, extrude, remove. This can be a through all. There we go. Now just a couple of final features here. We got a fillet feature with a radius of 10 and that's going to be on this edge here. And then we have a sketch of a circle to create our, our hole or half a hole. Again, be careful not to pick up the midpoint here. Um, maybe you wanna go a little above or a little below. That's gonna be 12 millimeters diameter and that's gonna be a distance of 10 millimeters. Whoops, uh, meant to pick the center point of that circle. Uh, so we're gonna go here to the center of that circle. That's gonna be 10 millimeters and we'll do a remove and we'll make that through all. And there we go. And uh, now we can do a mirror command. So I've got mirror on my S key just to save some time. And that's going to be this entire part mirrored about this face. So make sure you come over here and pick the entire part, pick this face, and then choose add. Because we want that to merge together in the sheet metal model. So we do add there. And there we go. As always in on shape, we can come down here. We can look at the, the, the flat. I think the flat looks good. I think our part looks good. Let's come over here, right mouse button, assign material. And that material is going to come from the Too Tall Toby material library, plain carbon steel. We hit the check mark. We pick this model and mass properties and 645 grams. So let's go back to our drawing here. Let's stop the clock. So it looks like we're at 11 minutes and 52 seconds. Not bad, not bad at all. And uh, let's see if we got it right. 645 should be the correct answer. So we go out here to the end of the uh, video. And at the end of the video, we see, yes, we did get it correct. 645 grams was the correct answer. So not bad, not bad. 11 minutes and, and about uh, 50 seconds. Not bad at all. Uh, we got the correct answer and we got to show off a lot of cool tools in On Shape Sheet Metal. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this tutorial. Did you learn anything new? Did you learn anything cool? And of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for some more Too Tall Toby tutorials.